Hello, welcome to Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick and I'm talking with three people on this particular panel. First of all, on my right here, Franz Seisser of Deutsche Telekom. Next to him, Gabriele de Piazza of VMware. And last but by no means least, Marcus Brunner of Swisscom. Gentlemen, welcome. Thanks for talking to us. Let's begin with this. Surely, NFV is the basic intrinsic building block of 5G. Do you think that's the case, Franz? Yes, NFV is a key building block of, of 5G. Uh, fortunately, at least, uh, especially for the, for the initial deployment, which we know is non-standalone, so you attach 5G new radio to existing core. Uh, you can very well survive based on existing networks, obviously meaning you only uh, also deliver existing use cases, so you go for more speed, more capacity, what is exactly what we see with initial 5G deployments. Once we go to the more advanced features like slicing, having more tailor-made connectivity products, this is where we definitely need to have NFV in place, but that's probably still a, a few more uh, months and, and years out, so this is not something we will see in 2018, 2019 in a fully automated manner. I think 5G is the, it's a compelling event. Uh, it will push and drive the uh, you know, virtualization aspect of the software definition of the network. Uh, I, we actually see uh, NFV growing around the world. Um, I think 5G is probably, uh, uh, you know, driving some of the transformation of the virtual network function from an application uh, topology perspective. But a lot of the other uh, many carriers around the world are uh, growing capacity, and at this point they are looking at grow capacity in a virtualized way, even to prepare ahead of 5G. Yeah, I sort of disagree a bit on that it doesn't do as quickly as possible. Since I was involved from the very start of the NFV movement, I was expecting that it takes some time. On the other hand, it now just comes into the mobile space. I mean, uh, at Swisscom we have done uh, NFV deployments two, three years ago already in a commercial uh, uh, way, so it's not terribly new, but you don't replace something of in an existing network. 5G is start migrating the mobile network to a new way of doing things, and there naturally you do it on, on NFV, and there are coming new requirements from the mobile side into it, and from the different businesses and new ways of doing things are coming along. How far along the transformation process are we, do you think, in general? It, can you, is there a way of measuring it? Do you know where we are along the journey? I don't think you can measure it, even so it's, it's trite. There are several methodologies trying to measure uh, it. At Swisscom, we, we adopted certain uh, uh, agile frameworks. Uh, we applied DevOps for quite some time in certain departments, in others not yet. So I think we're on a good track if you look into the industry but overall you cannot measure it. And it must fit for purpose as well. You just don't do it for the sake of doing it. Transformation is a process. It's not a, a one-stop exercise. So you, you go home today in that world and you come back tomorrow and everything is fundamentally, <laughs> would be nice, a brainwash overnight or something. Uh, it's, it's, it's a process and you need to start somewhere and you need to do it in manageable steps because the most important thing in transformation is your people, your workforce and the mindset and they don't transform overnight. So you need to step by step develop, uh, get in the right direction. Once you don't have that under control, go the next step and, and, and move forward like that. Moving towards uh, um, you know, cloud native application or microservices, containers and so forth, um, it will be a transformation because of a lot of the uh, issues that's been over time solved in the last three to four years in a virtualization or in a cloud uh, you know, uh, virtualization technology, now they will need to be uh, applied in a, in a different uh, paradigm, which is container or cloud native, and I think there will still be, there are still some ways to go. I take it that we're all agreed that 5G couldn't really exist, given the expectations of it, never mind anything else, without a virtualized network. Is that the case? Do you, is that what you think, or could there be some other way of doing it? I think 5G even needs a bit more I mean, not the radio side, but if the, all the new business development we see, I think needs more cloudification than, than virtualization. And that one is, we have not really done yet, but that's, that's sort of the next step coming from virtualization, going cloud native. I think the IT industry uh, has done the same, the same movement, just a bit earlier, probably a bit quicker, but in general, the trend is also there the same. I actually think we start to see uh, a component of public cloud on the horizon as well. 
maybe it's a little bit forward looking, but we start to see how uh, services might be built and or federated across uh, your private cloud, whether it's Telco Cloud and some uh, public cloud services, either as an infrastructure or uh, fed in some over the top services. So that will also change uh, even the current thinking of NFV. That's why I would not just use the word virtualization, but cloudification is, is much better, yeah? Great. Yes, cloudification is by far, usually we differentiate between virtualized and cloudified. Yeah. Virtualized, take what you have today and, and move it as good as you can into a data center, knowing there will be always compromises, because the system is not designed for cloud in the very beginning, versus do something fundamentally different in 5G, which is fully optimized for cloud deployment. And that helps, because 5G in the end has two dimensions. The one is highly efficiently deliver ever more bandwidth and ever more capacity. I think that yeah, you can go a certain way in a virtualized environment, there are boundaries as well, but this is pretty well understood and they can do quite a bit. The other dimension is, and this is when we come talking about verticals, about slicing and all these type of things, where we need to have much more flexibility, much shorter time to market, and these are the things where we strongly believe this only can be de delivered in a, in a cloudified environment. What other prerequisite technologies do you think are required for 5G? Okay, there's a degree of virtualization, there's cloudification, as we've been discussing. What about other technologies? Are there any, and what are they? Gabriele, what do you think? I think the aspect of virtual networking, or software-defined networking, is at the core of how you actually manage distributed applications in this world. So, in this uh, new you know, 5G architecture, so I think it's a, it's a core technology. And, of course, I actually think there will be a change across the board. So, of course, we talked about radio, but core, uh, there will be an impact of how core network is built and or architected and implemented and distributed and managed and orchestrated and automated. So I think the whole automation aspect is another component that we start to see. The orchestration, it's still orchestration, yeah. but I think the, what changes it, it's going to be much more end-to-end. -end. Yeah. So, I mean, so far in NFV we, we talked orchestration about a sort of a certain place. Yeah. Now it moves into edge, into uh, customer premises. Uh, you have orchestration, you have multi-tenancy in orchestration yep. eventually. You have on-prem, off-prem type of hybrid uh, uh, settings where you need to go across. All of that is, is, is not there yet. So that sort of technology I think we need. A very important technology which we still need to embrace is API first. So everything has to be done via APIs, via software technologies, not via nice old point-to-point -point protocols. This is what we need to really push and People who look at it, they know this is one of the key criteria. When Amazon started very early with, with their, there was a key paradigm, API first. You do everything as an API. So that's on the, on the top. And on the bottom, we also must not forget the connectivity network, the aggregation networks. Also, they need to be uh, fully automated and, and, and controlled by software. And this is where we still see quite some weaknesses today. Of course, in the end, CSPs are in this to make money. When do you think CSPs are going to harvest the return on investment of their, on their 5G investment, when are they going to make money out of it, and where is it going to come from first? Enterprise, consumer? I think we know that there is not too much additional money on the consumer side. The consumer side is all about efficiency, capacity, because knowing what's coming on AR, we are all these bandwidth hungry applications, we need to deliver on the same amount of money people are spending more. more. I think the, the, the chance to really open up new channel, uh, new revenue channels is, is, is on the B2P vertical, B2P2C network as a service, so to say, area where you really provide something tailor-made to your, to your customer that he can deliver his product much better and more flexible. Can you really avoid moving to 5G? If you look at the history of 3G to 4 to 5G, so you know, it's, uh, it's like when in a world of media you can say, can you, should I or should I not do over the top and, and deliver? So I think we are in this debate right now, but uh, I think it's inevitable that uh, it will more like how you do it and how you can reap the benefits as opposed to uh, if and you know why. I mean, the, the 5G network part as such should be able to replace also some other networking technology to be a more, even more general purpose platform that specifically in the uh, mission critical space, uh, broadcasting space, and so on and so forth. I think there is sort of, there's sort of business flowing more on the 5G network than uh, going out. So it's, I think there's a certain consolidation onto 5G, I hope at least. Okay, well gentlemen, 
Fascinating stuff. Thank you very much indeed. All right. Thank you. Thank you.